Yo, what up, guys? Uh, talking here. I've been doing a lot of stuff on accelerators versus drivers. So I've been doing a lot of stuff on it in terms of talking about it, but I have yet to do uh, essentially a screen of what these both concepts look like, right? So uh, I got Jacob deGrom here on the left. We're going to have him as the accelerator. I got Max Scherzer here on the right. We're going to have him as the driver. Okay, so just a brief breakdown of this dynamic here is uh, one is going to accelerate and one is going to drive. <laughs> Simple as that. That's all you need to know. End of video. No. But um, for in all seriousness, if you have yet to do so, I encourage you to go look at a lot of context that I've done on this subject because it's going to give you kind of a better understanding. So you're seeing here me draw a bunch of arrows and with the Grom. We're going to break down the concept as we go by looking at both of these guys. So notice the lead foot of Jacob de Grom. As soon as he's going to lift that foot, he is going to initiate momentum forward. Right? I know I got a lot of arrows here on the screen, but they're all serving a purpose. Purpose? I promise. So as he lifts that lead foot, like I said, he is going to initiate forward momentum. Okay, so you, you almost see it, you know, as his head starts kind of lean forward, right? So when we draw this arrow up from his foot, you're going to see that he is moving away from that arrow and circle the head because, as I mentioned, his head is going to initiate this move, right? Um, now, when we look over here at Scherzer, we're going to see essentially the exact opposite, right? So he's not going to move forward until he gets into his hip coil at peak leg lift, right? So when we draw this line on, on Scherzer, his head is going to stay as connected as possible to that, right? So this is where a lot of, I would say, majority of, of youth guys would, would kind of go towards um, that type of delivery because they feel powerful. A lot of instructors will say, um, you know, echo the thoughts of ground force production and feeling powerful and driving into the ground. And so the, the body's natural response to counter that is to uh, put as much weight on that foot as possible. So Scherzer driving down with that foot and then DeGrom accelerating forward, utilizing gravity. Um, you're going to see it here as we skip ahead into a few frames while he's kind of in the middle of his drive phase. Um, and this is going to segue into talking about the different types of requirements for, for both individuals. So DeGrom being an accelerator, you're going to see he initially accelerated with his head forward, right? So that kind of propelled his body. Now he's in a position to control the center mass of his hips, right? While his head positioning is center cut, he's going to have a really good amount of body awareness. And then notice how he also stabilizes with that drive leg, right? So you're going to see it right there. That drive leg isn't just cracking into early internal rotation, right? He's able to stabilize that force and energy that's coming down into that single leg from his, his leg lift. He's able to stabilize it, right? So I think you can kind of get a visualization for an accelerator being a very athletic individual with a ton of body awareness, right? And body control. So you're going to see now as he goes into internal rotation, that looks pretty dang good, right? Like there's not, there's not many breakdowns that we're seeing. And again, why should we? It's freaking Jacob deGrom. He's like one, two Cy Youngs in a row, right? But again, just kind of notice where that positioning is with his head in relation to where Scherzer is as a driver, right? Again, as I mentioned before, his head is putting a ton of emphasis on staying back. This is another point to make about the driver and the requirements look at that hip separation that capacity in his hips right so in order to consistently apply energy into the ground you need to have this hip capacity to be able to do so so we hear terms of you know corkscrew the hip hold external rotation of the drive leg 
um, vertical shin, external rotation of the tibia, whatever it is, you need to have this capacity, right? Because if, if he was go to, if he was going to go to drive, right, and p- put a ton of energy, and that drive leg would crack into early internal rotation, then he would have a huge breakdown of power output, right? Because his goal is to drive as much energy into the ground and get that energy back up through the chain at ball release. So if he lacked the stability of the drive leg, breakdown. If he lacked the, the hip movement capacity, breakdown, right? Because that, that lead leg would, and this is a common thing we see a lot, that lead leg would pull into early drive leg internal rotation. So again, movement, stability, you're going to see the head positioning here um, with, uh, with Scherzer is, is different. There's no such thing as better or worse. Whoa, man, I can't, I can't figure out this freaking drawing thing. Holy smokes. Why can I not just draw the same dang line that I did with DeGrom? And it's not going to give me a degree. Sweet. Well, we interrupt this show with technical difficulties. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, as I mentioned, uh, you know, one accelerating his body, one driving his body down, right? Both same goal, right? Same goal in mind, throw hard without trying, you know? <laughs> so now as we take them, uh, into more of their, their drive phase, you're going to see a huge, uh, a huge component of, of effortless velocity and consistent repeatable, um, power is hip extension, drive leg, internal rotation, hand timing all in one. You know, this is something that they both do extremely well. See this arrow here is a representation for hip extension for DeGrom. Um, and then the same thing we're going to see with Scherzer hip extension, <clears throat> drive leg internal rotation, and then the hand timing up. So we're maximizing linear power um, on time with that arm raise, right? So another thing kind of echoing the thoughts originally when we were talking about Scherzer and his ability to hold that posture for a long period of time, if he doesn't do that, then we have a huge breakdown of that kinetic sequence, right? So those arrows were a representation for where that energy now is being transferred up through the chain. And we're just trying to get as much back as possible, right? So this is where I think it's extremely cool because we look at, you know, the positioning at as soon as the front foot is making contact with the ground, All right? So op- there, there's obvious differences, but the rate at which they both got there was drastically different. Right, so we saw Degrom accelerate his body into front foot strike. We saw Scherzer drive his body down, and then into front foot strike. Right, so they both showcase and have to showcase the ability to stabilize that both of that energy that they had in the beginning of their move with the lead leg. Right, so all this kind of goes to crap if we don't have the single leg stability to stabilize this incoming energy, right? Because that's that's the biggest thing to be able to do is we need to block this, right? If you think about the uh, analogy that I make a lot of times with like a wall and crash dummies in cars, you know, that it needs to stop, it needs to block that. So then the kinetic energy can really come up um, and increase that power. So I don't know, I think this is just a, a really cool thing that fascinates me. I think it's obvious that everyone knows that pitching, everyone's gonna do it differently. But um, this concept that I've, I've come up with, I mean, I'm not going to say I've come up with it. I was just trying to come up with something that would make a more sense for guys on trying to determine, you know, what it's going to be and how they got to position their, themselves to maximize their potential. And this is kind of two things that just by looking and just studying and <laughs> just being curious about highly effective pitchers, this is something that I've stumbled upon, right? So we look at accelerators. We look at guys, you know, that are extremely athletic, good body control. Um, so just to name a few, like right off the top of my head, I'm thinking uh, Degrom, obviously Bauer, um, Stroman, uh, Sonny Gray, right? Like smaller dudes 
that have the athleticism and coordination and stability to accelerate their bodies throughout their drive phase and then stabilize in their front foot, right? Whereas we look at drivers, right? Big dudes, big lower halves that are able to produce mass amounts of energy into the ground, stabilize that energy, and then get that back in a linear fashion by exceptional uh, movement capacity and quality. You know, guys like um, Scherzer, uh, Madison Bumgarner, Nolan Ryan, Roger Clemens, uh, Tommy Canely, guys that I just watch um, that do that exceptionally well, right? That, that both, I think it was Nolan Ryan, I was reading one of his books, and it was something that he made a point to always think about, whereas like he was not going to move forward until he reached the peak of his leg lift. And so that I read that at a young age, and that's something that I like did myself. Um, I, I was always kind of like, okay, well, I don't move forward until I reach that leg lift. And now that I dive more into it, like it just makes sense, right? As far as accelerators, it just makes sense to accelerate your body. Um, I have great handwriting. <laughs> Uh, so there's, there's obviously a lot that goes into it and I'll try to do more videos on this because there's, there's going to be individuals, uh, that are hybrids. I did a, I did a breakdown on, um, Jordan Hicks. It's kind of the same thing, hybrid, but, uh, yeah, that's it guys. Um, enjoy. Talk to you.